just a waiting game, really. Went until one of the midwives come and checked her and said, oh, you're five centimetres dilated. I think that's when she started to worry and thought, right, I need me some drugs. <laughs> I'm on the birthing ball, bouncing up and down with the gas and air, finding it absolutely hilarious because it's just like being drunk. Oh, the gas and air, she loved the gas and air. <laughs> she would not put it down. It got to a point where the midwife turned it off without her knowing, <laughs> and she was still there. The pain starts to get really unbearable, and Louie and my mum said that I don't have to be brave in the sense of just having gas and air. I can take other forms of drugs if I need to have it. She was in pain and she was just wanting anything. I was literally just sitting there holding her hands, just talking her through, just say it's going to be OK and things like that. And the nurse goes off, gets a pepidine, come and injects me in the leg. I can hear her warning everybody else in the room that she's going to complain for a while that it's not working and it's not doing anything. Just ignore her. It will kick in when it's ready to kick in. I must have passed out because I turned to my husband, who's to my right, and said, did I just disappear? She turned to me, she's like, did I just disappear? When I was looking at her, she's just gazing into a distance. So what was going through her head at the time? <laughs> Anyone knows, <laughs> you know? I'm in a swimming pool. The gas and air in my mouth is an oxygen tank in my hallucination. My husband's in the pool, and the midwife is actually a swimming instructor standing on the edge of the pool, telling me I'm doing really well, keep going, keep going. And then I can hear someone else that isn't even in the room going, come on, one more length, one more length, one more length. We're all just, she's obviously just sitting there gazing around. I'm engaging in conversation elsewhere because I'm not getting anywhere with her. <laughs> I was really badly hallucinating. Luckily, as it got closer to the time I was ready to push, it had completely worn off. So I'm telling them, I'm going to push. My mum's going, you're not, you're not, you're not. And Louie's going to me, you're not. The midwife says you're not. I was like, I'm telling you now, I'm ready to push. I'm going to push whether you get the midwife or not. As his head was crowning, it was either it was a cut or a tear. And they were sitting there deciding if they were going to cut Joe. And they're standing at the end of the bed having a discussion about if they're going to cut me to get the baby out, which obviously I'm listening to. She looked at me and she thought, no, I'm not having that. And she, that was it. I just see her give it all her might and then that was it. And I just thought, you're not cutting me. And I decided just to push him out. So as they realised I, I was protesting and I was just going to push him out, they obviously put the scissors down and obviously started to bring him out. He just, just flung out. <laughs> it was uh, quite... A, I'm very proud of her for that moment, to be honest. About 51 minutes after I start, first had the urge to push, uh, Logan was born. <laughs>